Rice City Kids, we're back for week two of Block Party. And you are invited. We're going to learn more about the connection between friendship and God's character as shown through God's big story. The big story's main character is Jesus. He showed us the greatest example of love when he laid his life down for his friends. With his words and actions, he showed friendship to everyone he met. When we reflect Jesus' love, we can show we love one another with friendship. That brings us to our life app, Friendship, using your words and actions to show others you care. God created you to love one another. What we say to others can be love and life-giving that can bring hope and healing to those around you. There's something special about friendships. When you help each other succeed in how you love them, we're going to dive into the story of two friends demonstrating this so well. Let's learn more about loving one another in today's so-and-so show. Here we go. Hey, man, how you doing? You got everything? Did you bring them? Uh, you know it. Oh, how about you? Oh, of course, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> then let's do this thing. All right. <laughs> Hit it! <laughs> yeah! All right! <laughs> Build! Oh, yeah! Go! Let's go! Woo! Ow! That's hard and it hurt! Woo! <laughs> Are you sure this is how you have a block party? And I'm John, and this is the, the So and So Show. On this show, John and I hang out here talking together about the world we live in. We learn a little something about God, and then we discover what it means to be human. Man, we do all that? Mm. We're good. I know. And today's no different. We've got a fun day planned, and we're going to get started with a little game we like to call the $1,000 Triangle. John, show me the money. You don't have the money? I spent it all on olives. What? Never mind. Okay, today we're gonna play a little game called the 25, 26, 27, 28, dollar and 31 cents. Woo! Triangle. It's time for the 28 dollar and 31 cent triangle. All right, here's how the game works. I'm going to try and get John to guess the answer on each of these cards. Shouldn't be too tough because the category is famous duos, people or things that go together. John, are you ready to play $28.31 triangle? You bet I am, Brandon. Then let's play. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number one, uh, okay, this is something that you write with and something that you write on. Oh, a chisel and stone tablet. <laughs> no, it's a little more modern than that. Oh, a finger and an iPad. No, no, okay, think about this. This is very common. It's something you write with, something you write on. These are two things that go together. They are... The mortal and pastel! No, what? Pass, pass, next uh... one. All right, okay, you can get this one. This is, uh, okay, these are two things that taste great between two slices of bread. Oh, what is anchovies and mayonnaise? No. Oh, oh, ketchup and sugar. Uh, uh, no, uh, okay, it's very, it's one of the most famous sandwiches you can oh, think oh, of. Oh, 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 to all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Famous duos. Oh. Pass. Uh, oh, my. Uh, Vladimir and Estragon? Yeah. All right, uh, these, uh, okay, these are two of the coolest guys on the planet. Oh, oh, oh who's uh, Thomas Alva Edison, who invented the incandescent light bulb, and Sammy Hagar. No. No, no, these two guys, they have a lot of fun every week and help teach people about God and the Bible. Oh, Mel Solomon and Greg. Uh, no, these two guys are the hosts of the so-and-so show. Steven and Lawson? No, it's the people hosting the show right now. Right now, they're also playing the game, $28.31 triangle. Uh, they are. <laughs> it's me and you, John. Oh. Me and you. Oh. Uh, Unbelievable. I was so close. You only got one right. But <laughs> Who eats peanut butter with jelly? I mean, 
It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hello, my friends. How's it going? Pretty good, Kellen. John didn't know we were a famous duo. Oh, I thought we were a famous trio. Hey, you're right. That's why I missed it. Yeah. What story do you have for us today? Well, speaking of duos, today I want to talk about one of the most famous duos in history, David and Jonathan. And to help me do that, please welcome the So-and-So Show Players. <laughs> Jonathan was the Prince of Israel. Hi, I'm Jonathan. And his dad, King Saul, was the very first king of Israel. I am king. David was Jonathan's best friend. Hi, I'm David. He killed Goliath. He was a really mean giant. David was a national hero, and everyone loved him. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> and don't tell Saul and Jonathan this, but God had decided that David was going to be the next king of Israel. What'd he say? Uh, I'm just telling the story. Still, Jonathan loved David, and he gave his friend gifts that were good enough for a prince. Here, friend. It's my bow and arrow. Uh, thank you, best friend. <laughs> and my princely tunic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. <laughs> and... Mm -hmm. My favorite pillow, my favorite soccer ball. Thank you. Hold on, there's more to come. And all of the important things. Oh, You'll sleep well with him. Th thank you. This will help you in a jam. Th thank you. And this will always provide the light just the way you want it. Oh, thank you. Jonathan probably didn't give David a lampshade, but you get the idea. They were best friends. Unfortunately, King Saul was jealous of David because everyone liked him so much. So King Saul sort of wanted to uh, kill David. Why does your dad want to kill me? What did I do? Well, he's not going to kill you. He, look, dad tells me everything. He wouldn't keep something like that from me. Maybe he didn't tell you because he knows how close we are. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, oof. Mm. What do you want me to do? Hmm. I'm supposed to eat with the king at the new moon feast tomorrow. Tell them that I couldn't make it. And if he gets mad, then you'll know for sure he's trying to kill me. Can you do that? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Wait. How will I know how your father reacts? Hmm. 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 I have an oddly over-elaborate plan that might just work. Mm -hmm. You see that stone out there? Yes. I want you to wait by that stone. That's After the feast, I'll come out with a servant and I'll shoot three arrows into the field. Three. And if everything is okay, I'll say, look, the arrows are on this side of you. And if I find out that dad wants to kill you, I'll say, look, the arrows are far, far beyond you. And if I say that, then you definitely need to run. Okay, all right, got it? Okay. What? What? Why wouldn't you just send your servant no, out no, there to no, tell no. me there's no time for discussion, okay? The game is in foot. Let's go. Go on. Okay. Ugh. The plan was in place. Everything was set. David had chosen not to eat with the king at the new moon feast. The only question was, how would King Saul react? Well, on the second night of the feast, King Saul noticed something was missing. Son? Yes, Father. Where? Yes. Is? Yes. The ketchup! Oh, um, uh, it's, uh, right here. Right, it's right here. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And, uh, thank you. I believe it's pronounced ketchup, last I heard. Huh. Yeah, well, <laughs> the more you know. Ah. Uh, also, Where? Yes, Father. Is? Yes, the, the, the mustard. Um, it's right, right. Right there. <laughs> yes, uh, 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah, you. No problem. Mm. There's a little red, a little yellow. Makes a very mm. happy mm -hmm. fellow. Very good now. <laughs> oh, son. Mm. <clears throat> yes, father. Uh, where's David? Um, he wanted to go visit his family, so I let him go. What? Uh, now, do you not realize that as long as he is alive, you will never be king? David must die! He but he hasn't done anything! Oh. King Saul was so angry. He grabbed a spear and threw it at his own son. I'm going to throw this spear at you. No, no. You best no. run! No! You no. best run! Uh, not, not a pickle spear, an actual spear, but whatever. The spear missed Jonathan, and Jonathan had all the information that he needed. King Saul wanted to kill David. So it was time to send David the signal. Come, unnamed servant from the Bible. Let's shoot some arrows into the field for no mysterious reason whatsoever. Shall I make the sound, sire? Oh, shall you make the sound? <laughs> Don't you always make the sound? Very Thank good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent marksmanship, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Now, run out into the field and collect those arrows. Uh, but they're just, they're just right there. Go! Okay. Hurry! Run fast! Don't stop! The arrows are far beyond you! I feel like you're not even looking at me. Just go! Run! Have I gotten there yet? Okay, okay, okay. I'm, there it, oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> Yahtzee, all right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very well, lad. You take those weapons back to town. Okay. When the servant left, David came out of hiding and met his friend on the field one last time. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Promise me you'll always be kind to my family, even after my father is gone. I promise. In the name of the Lord, you and I have made a promise to be friends. It's not only a promise between us, but between our children after us. Yes. Go in peace. By protecting David that day, Jonathan saved the life of the future king of Israel. But more importantly than that, he saved his friend. The end. How about a hand for the so-and-so show players? Uh, wow, what an incredible story. I know, Jonathan was a prince, so by saving David, he was basically giving up the throne. And that's risking amazing. his life. I mean, Jonathan really laid everything on the line for his friend. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what friends do, isn't it? They love each other. They're patient and kind. They protect each other and never give up on each other. It's, it's like the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Corinthians. Love never fails. Never? Uh, I'm not sure I'm that good of a friend. No offense. No, but... I'm with you. It's true. I think if we really want to love like a true friend, we're going to need God's help. He knows more about love than anyone. Well, think about it. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for us so that we would know how important we are to him. Talk about laying everything on the line. Yeah, that's so true. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye, Kellen. So if God went out of his way to show us how important we are to him, and if Jonathan went out of his way to show David how important he was, what, what does that mean for us? Don't ask me, ask them. All right, reveal the question. How can you show your friends they're important? 
Yeah, yeah. What are some ways you can show your friends they're important to you? Yeah, uh, maybe give them a wrapped apple. A wrapped apple? Now they're healthy. Or maybe spend time with them. Oh, you don't even have to wrap the apple if you don't want to. Just talk about it together. How can you show your friends they are important? Y you know, you've never even once given me an apple. I'm Brandon. Uh, and I'm John. And this was The So-and-So Show. Not even mashed or sauced. By, you would want a mashed apple? For, Absolutely. Like Haven't you ever had a mashed apple? As we wrap up, we returned to 1 Samuel 20 for one of the most famous friendships in the entire Bible. David and Jonathan. These guys went through a lot together. From making a promise to help each other to escaping the dangers of Jonathan's own father, King Saul. They showed us exactly what it meant for friends to love each other. Doesn't that remind you of our memory verse? Say it with me. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. Escaping the dangers of Jonathan's own father and the promise to help each other showed that they loved each other when trouble came and that they promised to love at all times. Let's jump to our key question. How can you show your friends they're important? Take the time to hang out with your friends instead of speaking first. How about listening first? When you listen, it shows you care about what they have to say. That's how you love one another, by thinking of what you want to say or do and thinking of others instead. So let's join our small groups and dive deeper to how friends love one another.